educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 12th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We do not make that one little two by four shift. It means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstances of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I. It just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-664. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Send, send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a bit of a mixed bag out here. That mix coming from the S&P and NASDAQ, which have gone just slightly negative, basically flat. And the S&P NASDAQ is flat as well. Dow's up 98 points. Russell's up 8. Semis are up 23. Trannies are up 78. You've got gold trading out at 1726. That's back 5 bucks. Silver's off 16 pennies. 1896 is the print there. Lights recruit off 780. 9631. You've got natural gas off 26 points. Uh, 26 points. 26 cents. That's down a little over 4%. She's traded at 615, the 30 year treasury up at the 139.13 level. That's up uh, 22 ticks as we speak. Lead the charge. Dollar wise, the upside, you got booking holdings. That's up 27 bucks, 1.5%. Charter communications, 19 bucks, 4 and a quarter. Boeing is up 11 bucks, 8%. Big move there. BlackRock up 8 bucks, 1 and 3 tenths percent. SVB Financial. Nine buck Roonies, it's up a little over 2%. To the downside service now, uh, 53 bucks, about 11%. Paycom Software down 24, 8%. Thermo Fisher down 19 bucks, 3.5%. Uh, Atlassian Corporation down 8 bucks, I'm 8%. That's 17 buck Roonies. And Palo Alto Networks off $16, 3% to the downside. So what do we got out here? Good question. I tell you what, we've got a quick request. I was going to go to it any by the G-Man, and that was to take a look at Apple. And the reason we're going to take a look at Apple Go over to this three time frame. Then we'll go into the actual uh, charts, the uh, equity uh, future charts out here. What well, we can see about Apple, so there's an A to B equals CD to the upside. So we'll draw that in. And prices attain that level. Does not mean that the move higher is over, but the A point down here is January, uh, sorry, June the 16th. The B point out here is a move up into the high on June 27th. And the C point is a move on June 30th. Come on, put that in there. There we go. So you can see 148.22 was the one-to-one -one price projection for the uh, A to B equals CD pattern. Well, the actual high today, 148.45. you got to love it. Does that mean that the move is over? No. In order to complete a sell the D point pattern, we would need to see some type of bearish reversal candle. Don't think that'll happen today, but anything is possible. The other thing, though, that uh, we want to watch in the case of Apple, really a couple different things. Let me just expand out the daily chart, make it a little bit easier. And uh, the first is, or the second thing we want to take a look at, G-Man, is the top of its daily profile. So we know where the snipers are sitting. The snipers sit at the top of a profile. That's where the sellers are at. That level, 147.55. We're trading 147.59 right now. And so we're up against a level of resistance. Now, if price can close above 147.55, that would be a bullish outcome. However... Let's go take a look at this. We can also see that Apple is trading into a swing point from the trading session of June 1st. Now, that had volume of 74 million shares. 
If we just do straight line math, what I mean by straight line math, we take the 42 million shares that have traded so far today, we divide it by three and a half because there's three and a half hours that have uh, gone by, and we multiply that times 6.5, well, that would give us a figure of about 78 million shares. So price is moving into, now I don't know what it's going to look like at the end of the day. Obviously, you've got the open to buy, uh, so a lot of your volume is in that uh, first uh, 30 minutes, first minute, so to speak, out here. If we take a look at uh, what Apple is doing, if the volume holds up, it's moving into that June 1st swing point with volume. That had 74 million shares, and we're maybe at about 78 million shares. Well, just we won't know till day's end. But this is looking like, unless we get a bearish reversal candle, that Apple wants to make more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. That next price projection would be 152. So we really want to watch the top of that profile, 147.55. We want to watch that at today's end. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart out here, the daily time frame chart for Apple, my recollection is this is a TD9 count bottom that uh, formed on June 13th. And so if price can clear on the daily basis, can clear the top of its profile, what that then does is that opens up the Kimona for price to move up to the 163, 167 level. We don't have that signal just yet, and price is going to need to clear that uh, June swing point in order for that to take place. But likely what Apple is suggesting to us, at least from an intraday standpoint, is it wants to go spike the ball. Spike the ball says get up to the 150, 174 level. And it will especially give us that message if price closes above, 147.68. We're 147.60 right now. So that's what I'd be watching with regard to Apple. So how does that relate to the general markets? Well, let's go take a look at the charts for the NQ. So we'll switch panels out here, and uh, we'll take a look at the multi time frame set of charts for the NQ. And the first thing that we will do is I'm going to move something over there because things have changed just slightly, I believe, since we were last together. If we take a look at the NQ for its 60-minute time frame, well, what this chart is doing is looking at the TAS. Nope, it has not changed. It changed for a second, and now it's back. What I was going to say is, as the show was beginning 13 minutes ago or so, uh, we had that little bullish crossover, but that has given itself up for the 60-minute time frame. Let's go take a look at so the one hour. And what I mean by that, folks, is right now, as we speak, at 1.13 in the afternoon, 36 instruments are trading above the top of their 60-minute profile, 43 trading below the bottom. In order for the bullish move to continue, you'd certainly like to see this with a bullish crossover. The other time frame, or there's two other, three other time frames, you got the four hour time frame chart. Four hour time frame chart shows 37 instruments above the top, 33 below the bottom. That is bullish or a potential bullish signal. And if we take a look at the daily time frame, daily time frame still in bullish fashion, 27 instruments trading above the top of their daily profiles and 15 trading below. Of course, on the weekly time frame, that's where there's a, it's a real booger. And that is uh, 63 instruments. Oh, I'm sorry. Eight instruments are trading above the top of the weekly, 30 below the bottom. So what's all that mean? That means uh, we likely have a choppy market, which is what we've had so far. No reason for that to continue. If those market profile, market breadth levels change, and they all switch with the exception of the uh, weekly chart. If the other three, the daily's already bullish, 60 minute was slightly, no, the 60 minute was not, but the 240 was. If all three of those get to their merry way, then we should see a little bit more of a concerted rally out there. Here we've got the uh, daily time frame chart. Uh, what do we have today? Nothing other than taking out today's lows. The five hour chart formed a Rosemont indicator top and that pulled price right back to support. That was the bottom of the profile. But this morning's rally ran right into resistance. That's at that green oscillator and change line at 11, 985 area. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back to this break. Let's go to our first request to take a look at Devon Energy and ticker symbol XBI, the biotech for the uh, S&P 500. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development state gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. You got the Dow's up 80, the S&P's up 2, the NASDAQ 100 down about four points right now. Let's uh, take a look at some of the requests that have come in. We can always go back, take a look at the equity markets, uh, equity future contracts, see what they're signaling to us. But right now, we're going to take a look at Devon Energy. Ticker symbol there is DVN. This is for Rich. Rich writes in and he says, uh, happy two for Tuesday. Could you please provide your analysis of DVN? Looks to me like it's trying to form a bottom at the 200-day exponential moving average, so you're considering buying some. Okay, so you've got the 200 day exponential moving average. You've got that all figured out here. If we take a look at uh, my charts, so uh, you got the daily, weekly, and monthly that we're showing right now. The daily time frame confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern. It did it when it uh, uh, generated a three river morning star pattern. That required, that was over the uh, three day period of July 5th. July 6th and July the 7th out there. So support, you've got really two levels of support for Devon Energy Rich. One is going to be the bottom of its profile, 5007. The second is going to be the low of that candle formation, and that's at the 4886 area. Now, what Price did after forming that uh, confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top was it went right up to where it should have gone, and that was that red oscillator and change line. And that's the issue here because price has deflected that. That says we still have bearish momentum to the downside. In other words, we have a falling price oscillator below zero. So this suggests that price could pull back to 5007. So I know you're looking for an entry point. So it's be, uh, maybe if you, you know, so you've got it figured out, I believe. Let me just take a look at what the volume matrix is today as price pulls back. So I'm going to do this on my other panel out here. It's just going to be a bit easier for me to do that, but I'll share with you the results. So price is pulling back into the July 6 swing point that had volume of 16 million shares. You're at 5.4 right now. So price is pulling back with lighter volume. So if you want to use your 200 day, I get it. That's fine. Just know that it hasn't proven itself to you and, and a, a bit concerning that uh, price has been able to, unable to take out that red oscillator and change line. If we look to the weekly time frame for Devon Energy, we don't have a bottom pattern, but we do have perhaps a bottom signal. And that signal was that last week was a hammer candle. So we do know that price is trying to hold that low. That's the low that we gave you that said if price closed below that area, support will have failed. Well, the same thing on the weekly time frame. And then, Rich, that would be signaling a move to 4131. 
Now, the monthly time frame chart shows a TD9 count top, and it also shows that price is pulled back, and so far right now, price is holding that green oscillator and change line. And so for the momentum time period, what we have is really a neutral signal, but support is held. So support is held on the monthly, a nice buy signal on the daily with caution because of price uh, rejecting that red oscillator and change line. And the weekly says, well, I'm trying to form some type of bottom by giving you a signal of producing that hammer candle. So I hope that that helps you out. Um, let's take a look at your next request. That was XBI. XBI, that is the uh, ETF for the um, biotechs uh, in the uh, biotech sector of the S&P 500 my recollection and you're looking this as also xbi has been trending up for a few weeks yes where would you consider to be a good entry point so if we take a look at xbi what this actually did was this formed a uh, roads momentum indicator bottom back on may 12 price makes a run runs into resistance at the uh, top of its uh, profile looked like it was going to take it out and uh, there were two two sessions with a close above it but that third session said sayonara baby i'm going to go test support support was the bottom of the uh, of that daily profile kind of similar to what devon energy is doing although in the case of xbi price was able to take out that red oscillator and change line so really not the same so i shouldn't have said it was similar at all similar from the standpoint of price pulling back into a roads momentum indicator bottom on the xbi i don't know if it was done with a uh, lighter volume but let me just check that out. So the swing point out there, which was on May the 12th, that volume of 25 million shares. On May, June, June the uh, 13th was a test with 16 million. The next day, 13 million. The next day, 14 million. The next day, 10 million. Then when it took off, which was that following trading session, it took off with volume. 26 million to the upside. That was your sign of strength out there for the XBI. And now it's made that move higher. Now, what price has done, so today's move out here from a momentum standpoint, Rich, this was your bullish signal, your entry point out there. Because what price did, the oscillator change line changed from red to green, does it around July the 1st, July the 5th out there. And usually you get a topping signal when price pulls back and tests that level. Usually, not all the time. In this case here, what took place intraday was price got back, tested it, and rejected that level. Now, there is a new profile on the weekly time frame. That formed yesterday. And so your support level is 78.59. So not only was price pulling back to test its green oscillator and change line, it was testing the bottom of that new profile, which is slightly bearish in structure. Slightly bearish because the center rich is at the uh, 82.21 level and the top is at 84.63. But for the most part, you'd think uh, at this stage, or I'd think that price will go target that 84.63 level. I don't know that it's the best reward risk to get into it, um, but you were asking me where is an entry point. You said a good entry point. You know, it depends what your play is and for what period of time. We're in these choppy markets, so maybe short-term trades are really the uh, thing to uh, take a look at and do out here. On a weekly time frame for XBI, uh, Certainly, I can draw in an A to B equals CD pattern out there. That's the only bottom signal I would have. It doesn't really matter at this stage whether it did form one of the bottom patterns that I utilize or not because price is above the top of its profile. So that's bullish. The daily time frame is bullish. And the monthly time frame, what price did was it pulled all the way back to its third breakout level at 64.30. And that area is held. And we can see that this has an oscillator and change line that also has changed colors. So with daily support holding, with the weekly breaking out above the top of its weekly profile out there, and with the oscillator and with the bottom holding a breakout level, more likely than not, what XBI wants to do over time is go target that 98.31 level. And I'm not saying it's 98.31 that's going to hit exactly. That's what the number is right now for that oscillator and change line for its monthly time frame. Woo! So I hope that helps you out, uh, uh, Rich, for your two for Tuesday out there. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. We've got a request out here from uh, Dr. P. Dr. P wants to take a look at, can we look at, oh, huh, how about that? Looks like we've already done that. He says, hey, Steve, would you take a look at XBI? Okay, we've done that. Thought of biting around 60. So 60, what would that take us back to? Uh, 60... You know, even if price could close below the 78.59 level, and that's what you would need to see, Dr. P, um, then, then I'd be looking at first 75.94 and then maybe 68.86. But we don't, have the, we don't have a message right now that suggests that that is a likely outcome. Then you go on to say, looking at it as long-term investment, bigger bounce coming or back to a 60. Um so at this stage here, I don't have, I don't show anything 
get with it getting back to 60. In order to do that, you first got to clear and close below 75.94, and that's not the case. You're looking at this as a long-term trade. I think what we have to do is get to a long-term bottom in the market out there. And I am unconvinced at this stage here that uh, we've seen the actual low in the uh, market out there. So from a long-term standpoint, you might be waiting until... So we know that the markets, generally speaking, have a couple of time periods where it makes significant bottoms. Not always, but time periods. Those time periods are the end of January, the uh, and really the end of and the middle of October. Those are the two primary time periods where markets make bottoms out there. So the question is, what happens as we move into this October? That might be the first time, Dr. P, that you want to take a look at a longer term trade in this market. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, up, folks. What I've got up on my screen here is the 125-year history for the uh, Dow. And uh, what this shows us, so I mentioned before we go into break, typically you see significant the significant bottoms typically form at the end of January. So here where my cursor's at, that's around January 21st on average. Then we take a look at another significant bottom that typically forms. That's the one that's in October. Here, uh, it's for the 125-year period, it's uh, at about the October 26th time frame out there. Now, let's go take a look at, let's go back and take a look at XBI. Uh, since we had uh, two people that uh, wrote in about it. Give me a moment here to, why isn't there XBI? Go ahead and pull this up here. And it's got different patterns. Now, if we take a look at XBI, which we know is in a bullish 
run out there. We took a look at it. In fact, I think we came back and said, yeah, likely we should, should see price move up towards that 98.34 level. Well, in the case of the XBI, traditionally speaking, or at least, well, let me take this back, uh, 16 years. Yes, yeah, so over the last 16 years, XBI has formed its top in the uh, third week of July. That's taken a lower into August. Then you have a nice rally into the uh, middle of September and then pull back into October, October 27. Now, that's a traditional pattern. I only have 16 years worth of data. So, you know, does it really make sense to uh, put in the midterm election a cycle process that gives us about five years out there? Well, we can put it in. And uh, so we're looking at five years worth of data. And this is suggesting in the case of XBI that it makes a bottom around July 17th. But this is not the pattern that I see that's in play as we speak right now. Instead, it looked like it was more of the pattern that we just took a look at when we took a look at all years out there. Let's take a look at Devon Energy. Um, so let's take a look at DVN out here. And, whoops, gosh darn it, DVN. There we go. See what it is doing. And so for the, with regard to Devon Energy, we've got 36 years worth of data. Now, in the case of Devon Energy, ticker symbol there was DVN. We know that that was pulling back. And that was pulling, even though it had a daily, I believe it was a daily Rhodesman to indicator bottom signal. Price is pulling back. Lighter volume out there. It, but I did say that in the case of Devon, price ran up, hit that red oscillator and change line, and then rejected it. It's pulling back. So we still have that falling price oscillator below zero. So it's possible that Devon Energy, now typically in an annual seasonal cycle process, doesn't use, usually bottom until about the end of July. And then it moves higher into the uh, November time frame out there. So that's the normal season. Now, because we have 36 years worth of data here, I feel more comfortable when we put up the midterm election seasonal cycle to say, okay, maybe this is what's happening. Now, in the case of Devon Energy, this shows a top or significant top around the middle of May. The actual top that came in, a uh, significant top that came in was in June out there. So it wasn't in May, but nonetheless, got that top and price has been trading lower ever since. And so in the case of Devon Energy, boy, look at this. It doesn't typically look that good. But that's the seasonal pattern during the midterm election cycle out there. Uh, so I just thought that I would share that with uh, everybody in the audience. We've got a couple more questions that have come in. So let's go to those. The first one coming in from Hector and Patty. And Hector and Patty want to take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. So he says, uh, happy Taco Tuesday. Thank you. XLE when the shooting stars appeared at the beginning of June, we dumped our XLE wagons. Is the XLE by the D point back on? So great question. Let's go take a look at the energy sector, the XLE. And because he's talking A to B equals CD patterns, or Patty and Hector are, we're going to go back and take a look at the black background screen. And then we'll switch back over to the white charts out there. So the black background screen, what Hector has asked is, is there an A to B equals CD pattern? And the answer is, if there is, let's see, the, vol the swing point that I would look at would be June 23rd, 56 million shares. When that level was passed, it was with 48 million shares on July the 6th. Today, you're down with only 22 million shares, so price is below that swing point. So do we have an A to B equals CD? Certainly not on a daily time frame. It hasn't been confirmed. It could confirm. And if we did get a confirming A to B equals CD, uh, then what you're looking at is not lining up those wagons until we see price get down to the 53 level or maybe 46 out there. Now, that's coming from the daily time frame. But that at least answers the question. We do not see an A to B equals CD pattern out there to help you look load up the wagons. We are trading below the bottom of a bullish structure daily profile, below the bottom of a weekly profile. And that suggests that what price wants to do is make its move to 64.16, the bottom of the monthly time frame profile. Now let's go back and take a look at the white background charts. They may have other signals for us that we need to consider. And while voila, when we take a look at those signals out there, what you have, very much like uh, Devon Energy out here, uh, the XLE formed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator pattern. Uh, it did it a couple of times. Well, just one time. This uh, Three River Morning Star pattern out here. But again, in the case of the energy sector, Hector and Patty, what's price do? Gets up to that red oscillator and change line and gets deflected. And now we're trading below the bottom of that profile. And it's trading into its swing point from July 6th. Now, the July 6th swing point out there has volume of 48 million shares. So far today, we've done 22. That's light in the loafers out there. But nonetheless, if you do close inside that swing point, you could go down and test those lows out there. So you got a valid bottom on the daily. If you can test that low, that low being 66.45, do it with less than 48 million shares by day zen, that could be your buy signal out here. And perhaps price would get up to the 74.88 area. 
If we look at the weekly time frame chart, no signal at all of a bottom. In fact, this says you could see a move to 54.26. In the case of the monthly chart out there, you've got 65.99 as your potential level of support. And that's that green oscillator and change line. So a monthly TD9 count pattern, uh, price likely to test at 65.99. And I say, do not back up those wagons and load up out there, Hector and Patty. Just don't see it in the uh, chart patterns. So I do, now we can take the XLE. Uh, let's do, where am I at, uh, screen-wise? I've got to change it to this screen here. Um, for some reason, my other screen, when I put this over there, it starts blinking on and off. So don't know what that is, but we've got this screen here that we can use. So what, go, what we'll do here is put up the XLE, X, or XLER, which is not a symbol, by the way, to my knowledge. And we take a look at the XLE, and again, we're just looking at the seasonals out here. So from a seasonal standpoint, over the last 23 years, the XLE should continue to move lower into when? October. Yeah, so that's a potential. Of course, we really got to take a look at late speed crude, see what it is doing out there. Now, that's uh, if without taking a look at the midterm election cycle. Well, if we take a look at the midterm election cycle, it says the XLE doesn't gener generate a bottom until typically the third week of July out there, specifically July 22nd. But we don't use these. We use these as guidelines, not as exact dates out there. So that's what's going on with the energy sector, Hector and Patty. I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and have a uh, terrific Tuesday, terrific Taco Tuesday day specifically let's go to uh, yvonne who is asking about the doctor dr copper and freeport mcmoran looking for an entry point so uh, uh thank you yvonne for that kind comment out there and uh, uh uh very 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 nice of you to say so let's take a look at uh dr copper so where do we, for the copper contract we want to go to my other charts out here we want to go to this set of futures charts now in the case of copper i'm thinking it's september let me just uh, make a double check out there. Is it September or is it is it September that's a contract? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Give Stevie. It is September. So now we've got uh, HG0922 out here. Let's go see what it is uh, signaling to you and I. So give me a minute for this to uh, populate. So on the daily time frame out here, in the case of copper, let's open this uh, screen up. What do we have? All right, so we copper generated a confirmed by the D point pattern, and it does it back here the uh, day of July 6th when it generates a bullish hammer candle. Now, price is trading into that hammer candle, and if price were to close below its low, that low out there would be $3.27, and that would suggest that price is going to continue to move lower out there. That's the daily time frame. So let's do this, Yvonne. When we get back from this break, we'll finish taking a look at the doctor, try to give you our best assessment for what it's communicating to us at this moment in time. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. back up folks we're taking a look at the doctor what i did here yvonne is i went ahead and put the um, weekly chart up on our screen for us so both the weekly and the daily time frame form those uh, bottoms out there and the weekly's got that nice hammer candle and if price closes below that that low by the way was uh, three dollars and 27 cents that then is going to signal a move back to the 307 area now you can see the a to b equals cd pattern out here on the monthly on the weekly time frame and that was confirmed with that bullish hammer candle if i didn't mention that i think i did but i certainly want to mention that it closed below the low of a uh, uh, of a hammer candle it says if you're long you're wrong out there so that's coming from the weekly time frame uh chart for uh, dr copper if we take a look at the other intraday time periods like a five hour time frame chart uh, what we see here is that uh, price is pushing lower, less relative energy. A bullish reversal candle would suggest for that time frame a bottom has formed. You're below on the 240-minute chart. You're below the bar following bar number nine. And if it closes below that area at 2 o'clock, and that's 15, 17 minutes from now, no reason to think that that won't happen out there. That's negating that pattern to suggest lower price. You are at bar number eight on the 120-minute time frame chart. Uh, so we're getting conflicting messages out here. I'm just narrating what the charts are communicating to you. Sometimes we get that uh, conflict out there, very much like the markets. When we took a look at market breadth, we took a look at what the other messages are. It's really conflicting signals, all which suggest really choppiness out here. So I think with regard to the doctor, you need to hold off and wait um, at this stage and see how the next couple of days play out. But you've got your parameters, at least the key level of a bottom, to pay attention to. So I do hope that helps you out with regard to the doctor. Um, you also wanted to take a look at Freeport McMoran. So I'm wondering if you were asked about Freeport McMoran because you were saying to yourself, AUDUSD, that uh, hey, if copper's forming a bottom, then uh, maybe you want to take a look at a long position in Freeport McMoran. The real question or the real thing that you want to look at for Freeport McMoran is the Australian dollar, which I've just punched up on the screen here. And in a moment, I'll show you that that's the real correlation, or at least that's another correlation. And I consider that to be a significant correlation. So the question is, has the Australian U.S. dollar formed a bottom? Well, it turns out that its TD9 count bottom was negated yesterday. Price closed below bar number nine out there. The, that low was at uh, 0.6763. Closed below that yesterday. Right now we see a bit of a rally, but that rally should find resistance at the center of that. Well, I take that back. Can't say that. Um, I, I, I would watch the red oscillator and change line. Um, that right now is at about 6790 out there. But. I don't see a bottom inside the Australian dollar because of yesterday's price action out there. And why is that important? Well, the reason that's important here is we're going to put this uh, chart up on the screen. Uh, 
And this is a chart that shows you. It's a different correlation chart than what I normally show out here. But here, just looking at the two line charts. So this is on the uh, close. And you can see the directional correlation that exists between the two. I mean, it is as direct as you get out there. It's not exact. I didn't say exact, but I did say it's direct. So let's go take a look at the charts for Freeport MacMoran just to see what kind of signal they're generating for us. So F's, uh, what the heck happened there? Okay, so now let me get the FCX charts fired up here, and we're going to go ahead and change our screens so we're no longer looking at the Australian dollar. And, uh, well, that was wrong. What the heck was that back? Screens. Okay, here we go. So now we're taking a look at Freeport MacMoran. And we've got the daily, weekly, and monthly time frame charts. Let's start with the monthly chart. The monthly chart has wave number seven and a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Price is below the bottom of its bullish structured monthly profile. Just crushed that last month. That is suggesting that Freeport MacMoran wants to move lower. Now, the move lower, quite frankly, is saying $9 and a penny. I'm not going to go that far and say that's where it's going. On the weekly time frame chart, you can visually see the A to B equals CD pattern. I'll just draw in the A to B line out here, and then we can go put it, just take that line and move that over to the C to D level out here. There's your C to D. Uh, and so you can see that price is nearing that one-to-one -one level, that does not mean that's where price will stop. That's around 25 bucks. Could be a 1.272 expansion, 1.618 expansion. Could be just headed back to its breakout level, 23.77. But the weekly chart does not have a bottom. Because you've got that A to B equals CD pattern out there, Yvonne, if you're looking for a long position, I prefer to wait for a bullish reversal candle on the weekly time frame chart. We can see on the daily time frame that there was a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that lasted for one day. That was on July the 1st out there. Curious what was going on on July 1st with regard to the Australian dollar. I don't know the answer to that question. I, I truly don't. Let's just go take a look at July 1st. What was happening on July 1st? July 1st was, um, well, it didn't trade. Oh, it did here. That was forming bar number nine of a TD9 count. That's the TD9 count pattern that uh, failed. So we go take a look at, so on that same day, when you had a TD9 count on the Australian dollar, what you also had was a bottom signal, hammer candle, confirming the roadsman to indicator bottom for the uh, daily time frame. But that pattern failed after day number one. As price closed below the bottom of that uh, panel out there. And now you're waiting for a Rhodes Mintum indicator, a bullish reversal candle, to confirm that Rhodes Mintum, the next potential Rhodes Mintum indicator signal out there. Nonetheless, uh, Yvonne, I don't know what your time period is that you're looking for an entry. I would be focused more on the weekly chart, and I would also pay attention to that Australian dollar. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. We got a request out here from uh, San. Oh, nope. The first one coming in from SNP wants to take a look at BG. So let's get uh, BG out on our screens out here, see what they're communicating uh, to us. And BG is what? You think I'd have these memorized, and I do not. BG is Bunge Limited. Uh, not in, just watching. Well, if you were looking to get in, it appears that today is going to be your confirmation of the Rhodes Mintum Indicator bottom. You already had wave number seven. That was letter G. That was uh, confirmed on the trading day of July 7th. It was July 6th that formed that seventh wave move. So now I've got two bottom signals out here. Price is trading. This is Bunge, Bunge Limited. It's trading into a, a small little swing point from uh, back on the uh, trade. Well, you really could say there's two swing points. There's the one from just two days ago, July 7th. That had 1.9 million shares. You're doing about 800,000 shares as we speak right now. The other swing point that I was really looking at was June 28th, 1.2 million shares. Again, you're only at 792. So you're moving into that light, and you've got resistance. So the resistance zone out here, SNP, is going to be between 9013 and 9224. But on a daily basis, you do have a confirmed bottom. That may just be at price above its red oscillator and change line. Nonetheless, it still may just be a counter trend move up to 9224. We just don't know. But you've got a slightly bearish structured profile. So your resistance zone, again, 9013 and 9224. The weekly time frame does not have a bottom signal. You've got an A to B equals CD pattern. We can see that out there. Again, it's got a TD9 count top and a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. Uh, this is more than a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. Here's, here's the A to B level. And we move that over to the C to D leg. You can see we're well beyond that. So you're in the expansion zone. What you're waiting for here is the bullish reversal candle. See how the 1 to 1 on the weekly or really the daily too would have taken us to about 96.89. This is the reason that I say you do not buy 
a D point just because you've done the one-to-one -one level out there. You need more than that. And the way that the market communicates to us, the buyers and sellers, they check in each morning at 930 before they walk on that floor, so to speak, metaphorically. And what they do is they produce bullish or bearish reversal candles or sometimes just a candle that is neither a signal nor a when you complete a pattern, look for confirmation, bullish or bearish, depending on the direction that you're taking. G Bros with TFNM. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. So just to summarize BG out there, even though you've got that bottoming pattern, it's suggesting uh, caution and uh, to uh, wait on that. So that was a signal there. Dan was asking a question about the spot ball of Tudix. Sorry for overlooking that, Dan. If we take a look at it, what today we saw was price in essence testing and rejecting its 50-day exponential moving average. Price didn't get all the way up there. We got up to a high of 27.38. The 50 days at 27.58. As long as price remains below that, it says uh, be cautioned on shorting, not from an intraday standpoint, but from a longer term standpoint out there. And uh, and that's really all that I've got to say about the spot volatilitix at this moment. The last question was to take a look at the uh, GDX out here. We'll go switch back over to the daily time, well, the daily, weekly, and monthly charts for the GDX. 
We look at our three panel chart out there in the daily time frame. We've got a TD nine count bottom. A TD nine count bottom is being attacked as we speak. And so the question is, what's the volume on this pullback right now into that uh, swing point? That swing point, which was from uh, July the 6th, had volume of 24 million shares. You're pulling back with 10 million shares as we speak right now. Now, there is a bullish structure daily profile. So you'd like to see the GDX close back above the bottom of that level. The bottom of that level is uh, 26.41. If it doesn't close above it, you may go test and perhaps take out the low from July 6th. That was your TD9 count bottom. No such bottom on a weekly time frame. No such bottom on a monthly time frame. So on the daily... Uh, you want to see the GDX close above its oscillator and change line. If it does that, that would suggest to move to 2866 and above that, 3098. Do we have a confirmed bottom out here? You know, it's just the weekly and the monthly charts that are the ones that are the little boogers out there. And what you'd really like to see is you'd really like to see some kind of solid bottom in the case of Goldilocks out there. And it does have a TD9 count bottom, but as I mentioned earlier, uh, as we began the show or during the market update, what you need to see in gold, it's got a hold its TD9 count bottom, which is 1730.70 for 1724.50. Hey, folks, thanks so much for joining me here on Terrific Tuesday. Stay tuned. You've got two more wonderful hours up next. Your favorite polar bears up next. After that, Tom O'Brien will take us on home. I'll be back with you tomorrow. Wonderful Wednesday, 1 o'clock sharp. Let's get in.